Welcome to today's video. I'm Gary Wuryawan and today I want to talk about six best micro four touch lenses for travel. Let's go. If you are new to my channel, welcome. In this channel, I mainly talk about photography and music from the perspective of an enthusiast. So if you are into those kind of things and you are looking for something more authentic and more honest, please consider subscribing to my channel. Now let's continue with today's video. So today I'm going to share six micro four touch lenses that I think are the best for travel photography as well as for video. But before that, I wanna quickly talk about why do you use micro four touch camera system for travel photography and video? And the answer is because I think micro four touch camera and lenses, they strike a perfect balance right in the middle between size and portability, as well as image quality and performance. And that's why I really love micro four touch so much for travel photography. It provides image quality that is much better compared to a smartphone camera, but still in the size that is not as large as full frame camera or APS-C. If you want to learn more about using micro four touch camera for travel photography and video, you might want to check out this video up here. I talk about some tips of using micro four touch camera for travel. So check that out. Anyway, I've been using micro four touch frequently for travel photography and video. Ever since I switched to micro four touch nine years ago, I've been traveling to so many countries with micro four touch camera and I've been doing travel photography very frequently. So I'm very experienced in that matter. You might want to understand more about why I switched to micro four touch. You can check out this video up here. But today I want to talk about one issue that I always have every time I'm traveling and that is choosing which lens to bring with me on that particular travel. So today I want to share what I think after so many years of traveling are the six best lens for travel for micro four touch camera system. First lens is the obvious choice for travel photography, which is a super zoom lens. Right here, I have with me the Panasonic 14 to 140 millimeter f3.5 to f5.6 Mark one. There's a Mark II version. The difference between this and the Mark II version is that the Mark II version features weather sealing. This guy doesn't have weather sealing. You can also go with the Olympus version, 12 to 100 millimeter f4 or 14 to 150 uh, f5.6. I think that is also a good lens as well. But anyway, the thing that I love the most about super zoom lens, obviously, is the zoom range. It can go from a really wide angle, 14 millimeter all the way to 140 millimeter. So anything from a scenery, landscape photography, street photography, all the way to wildlife photography and distant telephoto landscape picture, this lens will do it all nicely. This lens also have image stabilizer, so it really helps for slower shutter speed and for taking smooth video, this guy will help you do that. And also it is very sharp in my opinion. The image quality is really nice. There's nothing really wrong with the image quality taken using this lens. And that's what I love about this lens the most, the image quality. There's not really that much compromise. So if sharpness and detail is something that you really prioritize, then this lens will deliver it for you. So yeah, super zoom lens. The only weakness of this lens, I think, is the lack of large aperture. This lens only goes to f5.6, which is not really that bad, uh, but you will struggle a little bit in lower light situation. You might have to raise your ISO. However, with the help of the image stabilizer on this lens, and also if your camera body features image stabilizer, then I think that should be uh, no longer an issue. And another problem is background blur. With f5.6, you won't get that much background blur, especially with lenses like this. However, if you zoom it all the way to 140 millimeter, I think you can still get a little bit of a nice bokeh or background blur, even though it's not going to be really that dramatic, but it's still more than good enough for me. So yeah, super zoom lens. Another thing that you need to keep in mind with a super zoom lens is the fact that it doesn't have ultra wide angle focal length. It only goes down to 14 millimeter. You cannot go any wider than that. 
and that's where the second lens comes in. This lens is an ultra wide angle lens. This is a prime lens, not a zoom lens like earlier. This is the Lawa 7.5 millimeter F2. So this has a focal length of 7.5 millimeter, really, really wide. Excellent for landscape photography, for that classic wide angle landscape stuff where you want that beautiful foreground and exaggerated perspective and just nice distant background. Uh, this lens will do it for you. It's really nice because it has large aperture of f2, which is quite unusual for ultra wide angle lens. It is also very small, very lightweight. The image quality, mwah, really sharp, really detailed, and the colors are nice, the contrasts are nice. There's a little bit of problem with vignetting, but as long as you stop it down a little bit, then it's not going to be an issue. There's also a little bit of problem with flares, but again, this is an ultra wide angle lens. All ultra wide angle lens will suffer from the same problem anyway. And then another problem is that this is a manual focus lens, so you cannot use autofocus. You have to rely on using uh, focus picking or other manual focus aid in your camera. But uh, some of these trades off, I think, are really worth it because uh, this lens is really sharp. The image quality is really nice. Again, this is really small. So for traveling, this makes a lot of sense. So yeah, the Lawa 7.5 millimeter F2. Anyway, the Lawa 7.5 millimeter and the Panasonic 14 to 140 millimeter, this combo has been really great for me because I actually used this combo for my trip to Iceland last year and they produce some fantastic images that I really love. And if you want to check out more about my Iceland travel vlog, you can check out this uh, card up here and you can uh, take a look at some of my Iceland vlogs featuring the 14 to 140 and 7.5 millimeter pictures. Still speaking about wide angle lens, the next lens on my list is the Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 millimeter f2.8 to f4. This is another fantastic ultra wide angle lens with zoom. So uh, the last lens, the Lawa, is a prime lens. It doesn't zoom at all. This guy zooms and that's really fantastic because I can have a little bit of flexibility. Sometimes I'm not shooting wide angle all the time. I want something a little bit tighter, a little bit more normal, quote unquote, and this lens can really help me with that. The focal length is really forgiving and it goes down to 8 millimeter, which is still really wide. The aperture is large enough, f2.8, I have no complaints. It really helps me with lower light situation. You can capture some Milky Way, no problem, it's just fantastic. The image quality, really sharp, really nice, really detailed. It's really worth the Leica branding right here. However, this lens is a little bit big, a little bit heavy. So yeah, you're trading a little bit of size and weight with a little bit of flexibility. So yeah, a little bit of trade off, but I think it's worth it if you really need that flexibility. Yeah, I really love this lens, Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 millimeter. Next, I have with me a very unusual choice for travel photography, which is the kit lens that comes with the Panasonic GX85. The Panasonic Lumix 12 to 32 millimeter f3.5 to f5.6. All right, so many people told me that using kit lens for travel is a bad idea. The image quality isn't really there, and then it's also really not that sharp. The zoom range is not really that flexible. You're not really gaining anything by bringing kit lens but I really think that kit lens is really fantastic for travel photography because recently I visited the United States. You might want to check out the vlogs right here. And I'm just using this kit lens with one more lens during that trip. And I was able to produce some fantastic results using this kit lens right here to take so many different kinds of pictures. Again, this is the Panasonic Lumix 12 to 32 millimeter f3.5 to f5.6 kit lens. And the thing that I love the most about this kit lens is that it is so small. Look at it. This is like a pancake lens, very small, almost flat, almost flush with the camera body. So it's very unobtrusive. It's very lightweight. And speaking of the image quality, quite the contrary to what people say, this is actually quite a sharp and nice lens. The colors are really nice. There's lots of details in the image. And yeah, there's just a little bit of flaws with this lens. Obviously, this is a very cheap lens, so you'll get a little bit of, you know, a negative points when it comes to image quality. First, you have to be mindful of some flare and ghosting when you are shooting into a bright 
light source like the sun or a very bright light, uh, you will get a little bit of ghosting and flares on your uh, image, but that's not really a problem in my opinion. You have to uh, adjust your angle a little bit and those won't be issue anymore. Also, the zoom range 12 to 32 is not really that great. It can go to really wide angle at 12 millimeter and 32 is probably more than enough for a little bit of environmental portrait or product photography or things like that, but it's not really something crazy like the super zoom lens. And then the next problem is the uh, aperture. It only goes from f3.5 to f5.6, just like this guy right here. It's not really impressive. For lower light situation, you will definitely struggle. And also for background blur, you won't really get that much background blur with this guy. But it's not really the end of the world. You get portability, you get a very small size, you get a very lightweight lens, and I think that's worth the trade-off. So if you're looking for something small and compact and lightweight for travel, and you don't really need that great zoom range, or you don't really need ultra-wide angle, then you can just bring this one lens. All right, that's the 12 to 32 millimeter. Next lens is definitely, definitely my favorite travel lens right now. This is the Panasonic 35 to 100 millimeter f4 to f5.6. This is a small, lightweight telephoto lens that really breaks all the rules about telephoto lens. Usually telephoto lenses are large, heavy, makes you don't want to travel with them because they are very bulky and they eat up a lot of space inside your bag. But this guy is quite the opposite. It's very small, very lightweight, and the image quality, surprisingly, is very sharp for a lens like this. You get really nice detailed pictures with this lens. They are contrasted, the colors are nice. And again, just look at this guy, so small, so lightweight, you can easily carry it inside your travel bag. And when you're traveling with plane, there's that seven kilogram weight limit that you have to obey. And this lens is very lightweight that putting it inside your bag won't really hurt at all. You still have that uh, seven kilogram weight limit uh, properly managed. And yeah, I really love this lens. Uh, there's nothing really much to say about this lens. The zoom range is just perfect from 35 to 100. In full frame, it's like 70 to 200. It's not quite as long as the super zoom lens, but I still enjoy using this lens more than the super zoom right now. Uh, and together with the kit lens that I just showed you earlier, the 12 to 32, this lens plus the telephoto lens combined together is still lighter than the 14 to 140 super zoom lens. So if you need a small, compact, but very capable uh, combo, then you can use these two lenses together. So yeah, that is the 35 to 100 millimeter. Last but not least, you might want something with wider aperture with a normal focal length to help you capture things in lower light situation or for street photography, or if you want to do a little bit of environmental portrait with background blur, you will need such lens. And the solution is, I think, this guy right here. This is the Panasonic Lumix 20 millimeter f1.7. So this is a very small prime lens that has large aperture of f1.7 and the image quality is just really sharp. The focal length is perfect for street photography, for food photography, for environmental portrait like, like what I just said. But yeah, the small size of this guy really helps for uh, reducing the weight inside your travel bag. So it's very useful for travel photography. If you don't really like the 20 millimeter, then there are some other alternatives like the Olympus 17 millimeter f 1.8 or the Olympus Panasonic also have this lens as well. 25 millimeter f 1.8 or f 1.7. Those guys are really great. This is right in the middle between 17 and 25. So it's perfect for that in between kind of focal length between 35 to 50 millimeter in full frame term. That's really perfect for street photography in my opinion. And just for general out and about photography, if you want something with large aperture and you don't mind not having a zoom. So yeah, the Panasonic 20 millimeter. The only drawback of this lens is the autofocus. It's fast, but it's not as fast as the other lens like this guy or like this guy or like the super zoom or like the kit lens. This is a little bit slower and you have to keep that in mind. Not that slow, if you are using newer camera body, the autofocus will still be really fast, but it's just not as fast as the other lenses. So yeah, that's the 20 millimeter f1.7. So those are all the six 
lenses for micro focus that I think are really great for travel photography. Again, this is just my own opinion. If you have something different, you can share it on the comment down below. Anyway, that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that today's video is useful, informative, and helpful for you, inspires you as well. And also comment down below if you have any other question about this video. Also, don't forget to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. Thank you and see you on the next video. Goodbye.